right, tomorrow you do have a test, 25 questions, all multiple choice. Tomorrow you are picking up your last country. Isn't that exciting? Yeah, yeah. Okay, tomorrow you are picking up Nigeria. It is your last country of the year. This is our last week of content. It's your last focus and your last vocab. There will be new and exciting surprises to come. I've officially planned it, and I've made copies already. Pretty stoked, pretty stoked, pretty stoked. Um, I'll give all of that to you once we finish our last 25-question test of the year, once we get back from spring break. With spring break, you literally have the same homework as you do on a normal week. You just have an extra week to complete it. Is everyone clear? Like, I'm expect to, on Friday, I'm doing Nigeria. I'm doing a little diagram of it, just like we have been doing, and that's how we're rolling through. Is everyone clear on the expectations here? Perfect. <coughs> All right, here we go. So, Mexico. Yesterday we got to um, our... Why is the North? What trade agreement has played a massive role in Mexico? What trade agreement? Jordan. NAFTA, and what is NAFTA? <coughs> there you go. Why does it have a huge impact? What does it transform in Mexico, Jordan? Factories. factories, absolutely. So the factory system in Mexico is that term, yes? Hello? You have to know that term. It keeps coming up, okay? And it is in the north. We talked about ethnic cleavages, yes? We talked about regional cleavages, yes? Here we go. Did we get to the Pista uprising? Well, let's do it. Here we go. So in the north, they have all of the factories. In the south, what are they doing in the south, Alex? Uh, agriculture. Agriculture. And it's mostly your indigenous in the south. Well, a lot of your white mestizos and mixed are going to be in the north. There's more economic profitability in the north than there is in the south. So the Zapista Uprising is the big event you have to understand, so write it down. It's in 1994. <clears throat> the Zapista Uprising is because of income inequality between the North and the South. The Zapista say that the Mexican government prefer the North. Why would the Mexican government prefer the North, Mr. Clark? It has all the factories. That's what's making a ton of money. That's where a lot of your foreign investors are. Absolutely. So the Zatistas are going to protest, write it down, and they are going to create their own independent territory inside of Mexico. Isn't that wild? That's crazy. It's like... Florida decide when the Florida is not a great example because it's you know not landlocked. It's like if Iowa wanted to break away from the uh, from the rest of the United States and just a chunk of Iowa is like no we're not following the laws anymore, and that's what they do. A couple things you need to know about the Zapistas: they are mostly indigenous. They are poor farmers. Okay, and there is a ton of anti-Mexican government rhetoric in this region. Okay, so they feel like they're the forgotten people. So in 1994, they begin challenging the authority of Mexico. They're still there. Isn't that cool? Hi, what happens when a state broke away from our union? What did we do here in uh, the United States? Yeah, it caused us a war, absolutely. When uh, South Carolina declared its independence, we declared war on them, and then la-di-da, here's the Civil War. They're still independent today in Mexico, and it is unrecognized by Mexico. Write it down. It is unrecognized by Mexico, but they are not paying taxes. They are not getting any tax benefits. And they're independent, and they protect their borders. They man the borders. It's pretty cool. I don't know. I like the little guy winning. So inside of Mexico, 
So this is the state inside of a state. This is the name of the state. They have this region is in rebellion. Do we think this is cool at all? I think it's neat. Anyway. Okay, you do need to know it's unrecognized. It's still happening to this day. Um, and it will probably never change. And it's all based on income inequality and preference by the Mexican government to spend tax revenue on the north, not on the south. Demographics. Here we go. A couple things you should know about Mexico. You need to know the capital city is Mexico City. <clears throat> you need to know it's one of the largest cities in the world. Anyone here been to Mexico City? It's not really a tourist. Have you been? Did you like it? Is it okay? I was kind of young when I went. Okay. Apparently, it's kind of really cool because, like, the neighborhoods are really unique. Yeah, that's the cool part, but it's, there's a lot of people there. Yeah, it's one of the most pop, uh, densely populated cities in the world. You need to know it's its own entity. What does it mean to be its own entity, Caesar? Uh, it has its own local government, but what makes it its own entity? Like, Tampa has a local government. Mayor Castor just won re-election with 80% of the vote last night. She also was running really unopposed. <laughs> you could write in people's names. Um, but, but we have a local government here, but we're not our own entity. What is an entity? D.C. is its own entity. What does that mean? Galen, do you know? Desmond? Okay, it has its own what? Sovereignty, but also what else? It has representation in the federal government. Write it down. Okay, Mexico City has both senators and deputies. Okay, in the federal re uh, representation. Does D.C. have both? Yes or no, Luke? No. They don't. Very much. They have representation. Which one do they have? Or do they have one or do they have both? There's two houses, Luke. They only have. They are their own entity, which is why they get federal representation only in the House of Representatives okay. here in D.C. They do not have state senators. Is everyone clear on that? Yeah. Okay, so. When we're talking about Mexico City, they get both, which is a uniqueness away from the United States system. They are seen as its own entity, which means they get representation inside of both houses, as well as the ability to control their own city. You need to know that they have a literacy rate of 95%. Keep in mind, ours is like 87. Who can raise their hand and tell me why their literacy rate is so high? It makes sense when you think about it. Why, Ethan? What type of Christianity, Ethan? Huh? Yeah, they're Catholic. Write it down. They are a hugely Catholic country. Everyone learns how to read so they can all read the Bible. What other country is similar in crazy high literacy rates? Brennan? Iran. And why do they need it? No. What's the book? Oh no. No. You could say it starts with a Q or a K. There you go. It's like this, like top five most important books. Quran. Okay, here we go. So the Quran is in Iran, which is what pushes up their literacy rates here in Mexico. The literacy rates are also crazy high because of uh, Catholicism. You do need to know that their population rate is very low. It's not like not happening, it's just very slow. So are there lots of babies in Mexico or not that many? Not that many. During tumultuous times and with inconsistency of governments and in countries that have a lot of corruption, you're gonna see low birth rates. Because <coughs> people don't like having babies in uncertain times. All right, economy is our next heading, here we go. You need to know the economy in Mexico is mixed. <coughs> it has a 
command economy, as in it has a state-run oil company called Pemex. It also is a capitalist economy because there are um, opportunities for civilians to open businesses inside of Mexico. So it is both a command and a capitalistic economy with Pemex. You need to know that Pemex is the oil company of Mexico. It is state run. All of its revenue is supposed to be reinvested back into all of Mexico. Who can raise their hand and tell me of specific evidence that tells you Pemex's revenue is not being invested all in all parts of Mexico? Jordan. Okay, income inequality is not a bad answer, but income equality gives us a better example of what, even The Zapista Rebellion is a better example because having income gap doesn't mean that it's not invested in, like, infrastructure or anything. Does that make sense? The Zapistas would be the best example of why the income gap and why the PMX is not being invested correctly into the Mexican economy. Desmond. Well, because of the preference for the North versus the South, why all the Mexican government and all the money is going to the North to expand the power of these factory systems and not being reinvested into the South. So you need to know that P uh, Pemex is under threat of becoming privatized. It's a state company and it could be privatized. What does privatized mean, Nick? Okay, it's not gonna be sold to private investors because there's no way Mexico is gonna give up their oil. Can we agree? Um, it's going to be turned over to a CEO to run it as a private company uh, that would never sell it. It's the sixth largest, and you should write this down, it's the sixth largest uh, oil production in the world. So is this a big deal or a little deal? Big deal, absolutely. America's oil, we have some. I think we're like number like 80th in the world okay, for oil production. We really don't have that much. Mexico is number six. Of course, who's number one? Saudi Arabia is number one. They have the largest st um, stash of oil. So the number one uh, oil, uh, oil is the number one product. They depend their entire economy. So what is the fancy vocab term that uses that, Jake? Rentier state. It based everything off of its GDP, off of its oil production of PMX. It is under threat of privatization. The reason why it's under threat of privatization is to stop corruption. Think about it. Is it harder to steal tax revenue or profits? Which one's easier to steal? Profits are easier to steal and easier to siphon off versus tax revenue. So if it's a private company, and you should be writing this down, and you shouldn't have to have me tell you, because Pemex could go privatized, it would force more money into the government via tax collection, which would slow down losing money to corruption. That's the reason why they want to do it. Because right now, having Pemex just wire money to the state, um, money's being siphoned off by pretty much everyone who touches it because corruption is a huge problem. Okay, you need to know that <coughs> General Motors happens to be one of the largest companies inside of Mexico benefiting from the Mexican factory system. What country is General Motors from, Britt? America. America, absolutely. They're from Detroit. Okay, That's where Ford opened up, and they have removed themselves from America and have moved to Mexico. The largest Ford-producing plant in America moved to Mexico. So the idea of people moving their manufacturing to Mexico is not just some companies. It's huge companies. Domestic policy is your next heading. <clears throat> One of the biggest problems inside of Mexico, besides corruption, is voter corruption. Okay, 
Look at me for two seconds. In our elections, which we had municipal elections yesterday, which I just told you Jane Castor won 80% of the vote, which is insanity. Um, anyway, with that being said, when you go to vote here in the United States for the first time, when you turn 18, you will walk into um, your little booth and you will bubble in on this really long sheet of paper your answers. When you are done bubbling in all your answers, when you're done bubbling in your vote, you put it in a envelope so no one can see who you voted for. Then you hand it to the attendant who actually slides your ballot in, and then it is counted. So when you leave, all you get is your cute little I voted sticker, and you have nothing else in your hands. That's how we do it in the United States because we do secret ballots. So who you vote for is your own business and no one else's. In Mexico and in other countries like Iran, Iraq, and other places, okay, in Iraq they do fingerprints. In Mexico, they give you colored pieces of paper. So you get like a blue one and a red one, and when you walk in to vote, you either put the red one in for the one you're voting for, or you put the blue one in. And then you walk on by. So when you walk out of the building, you have a, sheet, a piece of paper in your hand, and that tells you who you didn't vote for. Is everyone clear? So it's clear who you voted for and who you didn't. In Mexico, what is happening is that people are buying votes. Write it down. Because of the electoral system. Now, the PRI want this system to exist. Why? Because it helps them. They know who is voting for who. They can keep counts of tracks of votes and all that stuff. Today, they are trying to shift to secret voting. Why would they want to promote secret voting today in Mexico? Why, Jack? Um, to limit corruption. Yeah, it's about limiting corruption. You need to know the most trusted entity in Mexico today is the INE, or the Federal Election Commission. They are there to try to stop the buying of votes. They are trying to ensure fair elections, and they do election monitoring. How often do we say a government agency is really highly respected? Often or no? What is, does anyone know what government agency here in the United States is the most popular one? Has the highest approval of like 78%, which is like crazy that we can get Americans who agree on anything with 78%. Medicare is the one thing Americans on both sides of the aisle really, really fully support. In Mexico, it's the INE. It's the one thing post-2000 that has really made a tremendous positive impact in Mexico. Okay, foreign policy. Listen, and then I'll tell you what to write. Mexico has a ton of foreign companies who are making things in Mexico. So there's a ton of companies selling items in Mexico because they're making so many items in Mexico. What? Then skip it. I don't remember. This week is test is from week 20, so I, I don't remember what the procedure is. Okay? So, with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, there's a ton of items in Mexico from foreign countries. If Mexican citizens are buying a majority of foreign goods, who does it benefit? Mexico or foreign countries? Foreign countries. Okay? Here in the United States, we also have that problem. We have a lot of foreign, mar uh, foreign items on our shelves and at our, in our marketplaces. So we, here in the United States, have a Buy American stickers on items bought here in the United States. Yeah, have you seen them? Why, Brennan, is it important for you to buy American? Sit all the way up, dude. You would literally, like, where face is like three feet away from me. Can you please pretend? Thanks. What does that mean, Brennan? Okay, but like how? No, it doesn't go after GDP. It's not that big a sale. Desmond. But what does that mean? So what does it mean? It creates what? 
No. Jobs, ladies and gentlemen. Jobs. Every single person goes to work every single day to paycheck. You do realize I get paid to be here, right? Not well, but I'm here. <laughs> so if I wasn't getting paid, would I be here? Hell no. No offense. I mean, actually, take offense. You can take offense to that. If I wasn't getting paid, I wouldn't be here. Okay? With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, in Mexico, they have lots of foreign companies selling goods in Mexico. So the money the Mexicans are making are going to foreign companies, not Mexican companies. We have a similar problem. With that being said, they implement import substitution industrialization. Write it down. Import substitution industrialization is getting Mexicans to make companies that mimic popular goods of foreign countries to sell to Mexicans. So import substitution industrialization is trying to get Mexican citizens to create companies to mimic foreign goods that are popular in order to get Mexicans to buy Mexican goods. As a foreign company, why are we pissed, Ian? As a foreign company, please listen. Why would we be pissed about this? No, it's not about us taking the money. Fine, they don't want to buy our products in Mexico, but what is the real theft here? Jordan? No, we don't care about jobs. We're not hiring people in Mexico. Like, though, that doesn't hurt us. <laughs> They're stealing our what? If they're taking things that are popular, they're stealing our ideas. So Mac uh, McDonald's is super popular in Mexico. So what have they done? They've created their own McDonald's that pretty much rips off McDonald's. Absolutely. If we have a Nike brand that's super popular, it's an American company, what have they created? Sure, an Ike, I think that's funny. Um, a brand, very similar to Look and Sell and all that stuff. Okay, what you need to know about import substitution industrialization, it will cause a foreign backlash of, in, of intellectual property. What is intellectual property? What is intellectual property, Sydney? No, it's not always. I have intellectual property. And I'll be hella pissed if I find out you give out my intellectual property to your peers. Because even though I get paid poorly, I get paid to teach you, not other people. What is intellectual property, Grant? Mm -hmm. What would be an example then? Like ideas is just a little vague for me. What makes McDonald's special? What did they figure out in the 1950s that no one else can figure out? Ethan. Yes, it's things that you invented. Or all of your assignments are my intellectual property. You get that, right? I sat there for hours and hours and hours working on that shit. That's why it's got spelling errors. That's why it looks a little weird sometimes. That's why you see some punctuation issues. Because I sat there myself and I hand did it. That's my intellectual property. If the teacher next door took all my stuff and made copies of it and handed it out to their kids, that's intellectual theft, yes? This is causing lots of problems. Because of that, they're going to change NAFTA. Write it down. NAFTA will be canceled and will be replaced with USMCA or US-Mexico-Canada trade agreement. Okay, because of all the theft from all of these Mexican companies copying American and other countries' ideas and making money off of it, they are going to change the trade agreement to try to stop this. They are going to add protections for intellectual property. Write it down. 
for digital trade. Okay, so in 2020, NAFTA ends. The USMCA replaces it. Okay, and who's the president in 2020? Donald Trump. He ran on this platform of eradicating and ending NAFTA. NAFTA did a lot of really positive things for the United States, but it also did a lot of bad things for the United States. Like I said, the largest uh, Ford plant leaves the United States to go to Mexico. That takes with it all of those good union jobs that people were depending on. Okay, so pros, cons. We did get other things at better prices, but it, there is a lot of pros and cons because everything in the world has pros and cons. So you have to know NAFTA. NAFTA is going to open up the doors of Mexico and blow open their economy and put a huge amount of life into the Mexican economy. Because the Mexican economy is too dependent on foreign because of NAFTA, they are going to implement import substitution industrialization where they try to copy foreign companies, foreign products in order to keep the money inside of Mexico. That will then trigger the end of NAFTA in the beginning of the USMCA, which is currently in place. Not as effective as NAFTA. Um, it has a lot of pros and cons. Also, it also gets unleashed right before a pandemic hits. <laughs> so not the greatest of times, but there is some major issues with the USMCA. Jordan, do you have a question? Yeah. So didn't you write the piece earlier? Yes. So when I What do you mean more jobs? That they would obviously intellectual property and like like copyright and stuff like that. Uh-huh. Like how would they not lose any jobs? What do you mean? The ending of NAFTA? I don't know what you're trying to answer. I don't remember what the question was. That's what I'm asking. I'm so sorry, my darling. Okay. Supranational organizations it's a part of. It is a member of the UN. It's not a particularly powerful member of the UN. However, for World Trade Organization, Mexico is one of its best customers. Write it down. Mexico uses the World Trade Organization to negotiate all of its international agreements. The United States does not use the WTO. We work with it. We are kind with it. But we don't need it because we have lawyers uh, high enough in the international world that can do the negotiating on behalf of the United States. And the United States shows up with a lot of power. Is everyone clear on that? UK does not need the World Trade Organization to negotiate on their behalf because they're such a force in the economy and they have people at the highest level who can do the work. Mexico does not have that much pull. Mexico does not have those people at that high of level of domineerance and power and exposure to that type of law like the United States and the UK because the UK and the United States dominated with France and Germany. They are relying on the WTO. They are the most reliant out of all seven countries that we study. The second thing you need to know, Mexico depends on the World Bank. All of Mexico's infrastructure that is allowed for the factories to be built in Mexico in the northern part are all funded by the World Bank. So out of all seven countries, it is Mexico who is the most dependent on supranational organizations, specifically the World Trade Organization and World Bank. United States, we don't really need either. We got plenty of money and plenty of income. UK is the same thing. Russia and China, they can't get good rates because, you know, they do shady things. Nigeria, I haven't really gotten there yet, but they don't. I've read ahead, they don't. Mexico is the one who really depends on these things. And Mexico is a part of the International Monetary Fund, but they don't really use it because they get better rates under the World Bank. There you go. Okay, current issues in Mexico. Corruption! Corruption is a fundamental component of Mexico. It has been supported by what party? What party has allowed it to 
Expand exponentially, Alice. The PRI, they have allowed it to incubate for 70 years, and now it's in full motion. With that being said, corruption has allowed the cartels to rise in power. The cartels are the ones who are challenging the Mexican government in um, direct fights. Like, they're shooting at each other. They're, like, at a war with the cartels. It's important that you know presently the Mexican government is trying to stop the cartel. Write it down. However, you still have low-level police officers receiving bribes from the cartel. So, two steps forward, one step back. Another thing you have to realize about the cartel, it is the Mexican military doing this. So it is a federal response to a problem. How often does the U.S. military use its military against its people? Never, never, never. Like January 6th, even with this massive insurrection, the chaos that was happening at the Capitol, okay, did the U.S. military show up? No, because the U.S. military is not to be used inside the country against its civilians unless shit is getting real, real, real. That's not how it works. In a democracy, you don't use your military against your own people. That is like the end of democracy is when the US military like walks into DC, okay? That is a huge problem. That's a military coup. <laughs> That's what that is. So when all this chaos is going on and DC police are like, come help us, come help us, come help us, there was a slow response in multiple ways because the US military cannot be used to put down a rebellion here in the United States. It cannot be used because that leads to coups. Okay, in Mexico, they have to use the military to go against the cartel because they're the only ones who can fight it. You need to know the uh, cartels are moving drugs and moving people across the border uh, and human uh, trafficking, thank you human trafficking across the border and yeah northern mexico is where most of the cartel is why it's where the money is it's going across the border i mean why do business super far away now you will notice that this place this white space is where um there's no one has a hold over it because this is where the mexican military has really focused on keeping clear of any one gang taking control because that's essentially the major highway that goes through Mexico that most of your goods are going in and out of the United States. Now, there's lots of entry ports to the United States, of course, okay? However, this is Texas right here, and this brings you right into um, one of the major transportation hubs from the border, which is why our, all of our Prada Mexican products get on the rails and then go all over Canada and the United States. So the Mexican government is focusing on keeping this central part clear of one cartel controlling it. Um, and then they're trying to spread themselves out. It's pretty wild. That's a lot of uh, gangs. Hot damn. What do you got? Oh, it's the, it's the little panhandle. It's just a part of it. It's part of Mexico? Yeah. It's part of Mexico. I don't know what it's called because I don't. Baja. Okay, Jimmy. Is it California? It's not California. Baja, California is like right up here. Because this is the borderline of Mexico. Baja, California is like right there. This is part of Mexico. I'm like, yeah, California doesn't extend that far down. No, people live there. I just don't know why there's not that many gangs. I don't know. Hi, this is like my first like deep dive into Mexico, and I'm, I'm going to say it went pretty well. Okay. I'm pretty proud. All right. You have the last few minutes for whatever you want.